Good evening and welcome to the meeting of the Town of Fishkill Planning Board on Thursday, June 9th, 2022. I am Anthony Brozier, Vice Chair of the Town of Fishkill Planning Board. Chairman John Cantor will be joining us later in the agenda after the public hearing as he has recused himself from that agenda item. I would like to call the meeting to order at 7.01 p.m. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. So before we get going on tonight's agenda, I do have a few announcements. I've already mentioned the first one. Uh, John Cantrell will be joining us after the public hearing. Uh, Felix Lopez has informed the board that he was running a few minutes late, so he should be joining us momentarily. Uh, number two, reminder, uh, please silence your cell phone or other electronic device while in the meeting room as a courtesy to others in attendance. Uh, number three, please speak into the microphone so that all audience in the room and at home can hear what we're saying. And um, regarding agenda items for tonight, there are uh, two announcements. Uh, first one is for fish kill self storage. Uh, we have received a letter from Cuddy and Fader earlier today, June 9th, 2022, that I've been advised by council to read into the record. Dear Chair Chairperson Cantor and members of the planning board, we are writing on behalf of 1292 Realty LLC, the applicant, in connection with the above captioned matter. Due to complications arising out of the COVID-19 pandemic, the applicant respectfully requests that the planning board adjourn the above captioned matter that is currently scheduled for continued review at the, this board's June 9th, 2022 meeting agenda and that the matter be placed on the planning board's July 14th 2022 meeting agenda for further discussion. We ask that the board not discuss the application during the June 9th meeting agenda. We look forward to continuing our review of the project with you at the planning board's July 14th, 2022 meeting agenda. In the meantime, should the town staff or planning board have any questions or comments with regard to the foregoing, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Very truly yours, Taylor M. Palmer. The other item on tonight's agenda, Van Wick News. I have received a letter from Zarin and Steinmetz earlier today, June 9th, 2022, that I've been advised by council to read into the record. Dear Chairman Cantor and members of the planning board, this firm represents Toll Van Wick LLC. Toll, the owner of the unfur unfinished portion of the Van Wick Mews subdivision, AKA Merritt Park condominiums. We were informed yesterday that due to various scheduling complications, your board's traffic consultant has been unable to review the traffic comparison letter toll submitted on May 25th. We understand that obtaining the traffic consultant's input on the letter is necessary before your board will consider the draft negative declaration that has been prepared. Accordingly, we respectfully request this matter be adjourned tonight to the July meeting so that review of the traffic comparison letter can occur. We also anticipate submitting the materials requested in CPL's memorandum dated June 8th, 2022, ahead of the July meeting with the intent of completing the record so the board may act on the seeker documents in July. We appreciate that the town's consultant informed us ahead of the meeting tonight about the status of the traffic review and look forward to meeting with you again next month. Respectfully submitted, Zarin and Steinmetz, signed by David J. Cooper and Brian T. Sinsabal. So tonight's first agenda item. We don't have any minutes to uh, approve tonight. So the first agenda is uh, the public hearing, Fishkill Support Center of Jehovah's Witnesses, site development plan at 7 p.m. or as soon thereafter as possible, applicant seeks site development plan approval for the construction of a 47,073 square foot two-story office building, a 15,187 square foot one-story accessory maintenance building, the reconstruction of an existing 14,527 square foot warehouse for accessory storage and exercise use and the addition of an accessory park and meditation areas along with all associated improvements, including 247 par parking spaces, which we'll discuss, and four loading spaces. The proposed project is for use by members of the religious order and religious volunteers. The parcels for this proposal are located in the PI, Planned Industry Zoning District, 
with one lot consisting of 52.2 acres at 5 Chelsea Industrial Park and the other consisting of 5.14 acres at 26 Chelsea Industrial Park. This is a continuation of the public hearing that was opened by the board at the April 14th meeting and continued at the May 12th meeting, planning board meeting. Um, at this point, I would like to appoint our alternate planning board member, BJ Silpa, as a voting member on this agenda item, both during the public hearing portion and the project review portion later tonight. At this point, I will uh, ask the applicant if they have anything they would like to mention or present to the public prior to the continuation of receiving public comments. Good evening, Good Mr. Evening. Brozier and members of the board. Good to be back with you. Uh, sorry I missed the last meeting. Uh, but since the last meeting, I wanted to comment on a couple of things since this public hearing was held open primarily for the benefit of the traffic study and allow the public to comment on that. We wanted to emphasize we were able to submit the traffic study and that the traffic study concluded that our proposed project is not expected to cause any significant impact uh, to the traffic circulation. So in other words, the project's not gonna change the current traffic flow. And that was without taking into account that the primary users will be coming from the river crest. It was assumed in the study that it was as if people were coming from all over. We asked for that take that very conservative approach uh, to the traffic study. Uh, also considered in the traffic study were four days of the year, which we consider uh, might be an unusual traffic situation, and it's not a continuous thing, but um, those four days, the first is we have an annual block, part, block party, we call it a family day, uh, but it's called a block, uh, similar to a block party. And for that, we do ask the residents of Rivercrest to move their vehicles to the Chelsea property so that we can use the driveways, the streets for that fair uh, party that we have for our occupants. And uh, we do get permits from the town to hold that each year. We haven't had it the past two years, but we did just have it uh, April 27th this year. And then three times a year, uh, Rivercrest residents, sorry, these masks, I gotta get used to these. Three times a year, um, Rivercrest residents are allowed to invite family and close personal friends to a live streamed uh, special worship program. And so in that case, because there are people coming, we often ask our occupants to move their vehicles to the Chelsea property so that those who are kind of their family and friends can park closer. So we just wanted to make sure that was clear that that was included in the study. And even with that, uh, no significant impacts. Uh, we also submitted our documented responses to the comments received so far as of the submission deadline and points that we're committed to a meeting and agreeing to to help mitigate, address some of the concerns that our neighbors have. And then finally, I'd like to clarify just a few facts about our project. The proposed project is for members of the religious order of Jehovah's Witnesses, not Jehovah's Witnesses in total. It's a, it's a select group that volunteer their time and their energies for uh, the benefit of the religious activities of Jehovah's Witnesses. So we just wanna make sure that everyone understands that this is not like our uh, kingdom halls in our local our places of worship where the public are invited to come. This is a specific for the members of the order. Not even all of Jehovah's Witnesses are allowed free access in and out of here. And that will be controlled by uh, access controlled security gates that are part of the project. And that also applies to the recreation areas. Again, it's an amenity for primarily for the occupants of Rivercrest. It is not for Jehovah's Witnesses in general. We will not be bussing in spectators. We will not be bussing in teams. There are not tournaments. There are not leagues. That's not what we do. And that's not the purpose of this. Uh, that lack of um, Public access does not apply to the easement for the Greenway Trail. Obviously, that's being provided the easement so that when that trail is constructed, as with all aspects, other parts of the trail, it's open to the public to use. No printing operations or video production studios will be are on this site. Printing is done at another facility. We had looked at using this for audio, video production, but that's been moved to a project down that we're trying to get approved in uh, Ramapo. And then finally, um, 
in an effort to make sure that community was fully aware of the project, we prepared this two-page newsletter, which we sent out to 675 households in Holly Ridge, Overlook Point, Streamside Knolls, Vista Point, <coughs> excuse me, and then also the uh, residents to our immediate north along, uh, get the roads right, Briarwood Drive and Woodcrest Court. And so besides renderings of the project, we included information of where they could find information about the project on the town's planning board website. And we also provided the name and phone number of a local R Rivercrest resident that they could call any time to have their questions answered. The idea being we want to hear from our neighbors. And then of course we have also reached out to the uh, Holly Ridge HOA to uh, try to set up a meeting with them. So we just wanted to highlight those things and the fact that the, uh, the letter we submitted May 25th, we are committed to the changes that we highlighted in that letter. Thank you. Thank you. And later on, there is the project review portion. Correct. So you will be back up and we will go through your letter in detail and also the, the traffic study as well. So. Exactly. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we get started, I am going to read the rules of conduct for public hearings. I, I did see the, um, the flyer there at the front on the way in as well, but I'll, I'll read through them anyway. Uh, speakers are asked to come to the podium and identify themselves so that their name may be entered into the record. Speakers are limited to one turn at the microphone. Speakers are limited to no more than four minutes. There will be a warning when there is one minute left, and I will kindly ask our uh, council to keep time, please. Speakers should provide only new or different information or commentary. Repetitive comments made previously or at prior meetings are prohibited. Speakers are encouraged to submit their comments in writing so that they can summarize their comments during the hearing. Comments are limited to matters involving the business before the board, i.e. the particular application under review at the hearing, uh, verbal interruptions, shouting or other outbursts, as well as slanderous or obscene language or making signs with the body or face are prohibited. No speaker shall make any personal attacks on anyone. If a person continues to interrupt the chair, after the chair has asked them to stop, they will be asked to leave and escorted from the meeting room if necessary. Um, I'm going to pause right there. I'm going to ask Dominic um, just to regarding those rules, regarding the kinds of comments we're, we're looking to receive tonight, I don't know, you know, so that we don't have repetitive comments. I was wondering if you could speak to items that would be in our board's purview. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Thank you, Anthony. Um, as, uh, as was mentioned earlier, like the <laughs> public hearing was held open uh, for this month for the applicant to uh, provide additional information regarding traffic. The traffic study's been submitted. It was part of their uh, package that was uh, submitted to the board on May 25th and has been available for public review. Um, any additional comments at this point should really be f narrowly focused if, if possible uh, because we're going into our third uh, month of public hearings on this particular project. And so as a result, you know, like, uh, like repetitive comments or comments that were made, you know, at, at prior meetings, I think that the board is well aware of what the concerns of the public are. And so I think at this point it would be helpful if there's any new information uh, to be brought forward or any additional comments on any recent submissions would be helpful. Um, but overall, like the, the, the most helpful comments to the board uh, are comments that are really directed at the uh, proposed site plan, the uses, and the potential impacts of those uses on surrounding neighborhoods, uh, rather than just general comments or um, you know, other things of other natures that are really beyond this board's purview. Thank you. Before I uh, open for public comment of those in the room, we did <laughs> receive several uh, comments via email since the previous planning board meeting. Um, I will not read each of the emails verbatim, but I can assure the public that all emails are part of the project record and have been received by the board, our consultants, and the applicant. The uh, key items pertaining to the purview of this planning board will be discussed with the applicant in detail during the project review. Uh, 
we received an email from Kelly Antonucci dated June 7th. The commenter brought up several items, some of which I will um, ask our attorney to speak to. Um, concerns about the newsletter that was mailed to the residents. The letter described misrepresentations in the mailer and asked that the planning board require the applicant to send out accurate information. I just want to clarify that is not within the abilities of this board. Yeah, I, all, all that was required was the public hearing notice be adequately published and, and, uh, and posted. And, uh, you know, anything that the applicant wants to disseminate to the public to, uh, in their opinion, uh, provide information is up to the applicant. I mean, the board has that information, but the board also has all of the site plan information as well in front of it. And, and ultimately, uh, you know, th this public hearing is for people to make their comments on the site plan. Uh, other items in that email also included uh, concerns about proposed plantings on the town of Fishkill property. We also received an email from Kenya Gadsden dated June 7th. The commenter uh, brought up several items, uh, at least one of which I'm going to ask our consultant to speak to. Uh, a request to read all emails in totality. I did speak with you about this and the planning board is not required to read emails verbatim. It is part of the project record. Our members all have those as well as the consultants and the applicant, so. And they, they are clearly made part of the record as noted by Debbie when she distributes them. But m my role would be to indicate that we have in fact received. Correct. There was also a request to play a video at the public hearing and um, Dominic, I want you to speak about that as well, uh, about uh, whether that is, you know. I mean, the, the public hearing really is for the public to to provide their comments to the board on the site plan. Um, and as far as a, a video or if there's some kind of additional information that a member of the public would like to draw the board's attention to, they're, 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 uh, they're able to provide a link to that that's up to the board as to whether or not you would like to review something that's more general in connection with the applicant, but uh, anything that's specific to the actual proposal uh, should be part of the public comment that's made here tonight. Um, and uh, we're really not uh, set up to uh, be looking at uh, videos about uh, uh, general concerns. Thank you. Uh, there was also a question about uh, who owns Industrial Way, concerns about the applicant um, reaching out to the HOA and FOIL requests to the town. We also received a copy of the letter previously read by Louise Danielli at the May Planning Board meeting. We received an email from Han Yu Lee on May 27th in opposition to the project. The email did not make mention of any items that would be in the purview of this planning board. Uh, we received an email from Ann Cantor on May 26th uh, questioning the sewer structure for the project. Uh, we received an email from Marissa Bennett, HOA Board President at Holly Ridge dated May 12th, received by the Planning Board on May 13th. The items of concern brought up traffic, noise, lighting, disruption to nature and wildlife, access to the riverfront. Uh, the commenter requested downlighting timers and noise ordinance times. And uh, finally, we received an email from Yu Lei on May 13th. The commenter brought up traffic and safety as primary concerns. At this time, I will uh, ask the public by a show of hands who would wish to speak. I'll start from the front. Good evening, Teresa Kraft, Beacon. I just want to start by saying I take offense to starting this public hearing with a speech to intimidate residents from speaking in fear they may be repetitive to previous public hearing comments that they didn't submit, but somebody else might have said it. This is an infringement on our freedom of speech. Due to the proliferation of overdevelopment in Southern Duchess along the town of Fishkill and the city of Beacon borders, especially in the areas of 9D, it is imperative that this planning board scale back this extensive over build out plan project. Unfortunately, many large swatches of undeveloped green spaces in the town of Fishkill have been earmarked for these types of development. This proposed submission of what you said, 47,000 square foot, two-story office building 
and a 15,000 plus square foot maintenance building will forever change our historic view sheds from the Hudson River and the future rail trail, the Greenway Trail, being proposed along the river. We will see it stick out like a sore thumb. Besides planning for parking for over 240 cars being a large heat island, will these accommodate zero emission cars that will eventually need 240 recharging stations? That daily disruption this traffic will generate on its surrounding neighbors and Hudson Valley residents who travel that corridor daily will experience a detrimental impact on the quality of life, including my own. The town of Fishkill should not rush and compromise the integrity of our natural environment. The goal should not be to get cookie cutter projects built, but to have a quality of life and green environment throughout this municipality that will make the existing residents and visitors experience stronger and healthier lives. Throw in the mix of that application that was removed tonight or adjourned to the next meeting for a massive storage facility in the same section of town, we will see a huge increase on Route 90 traffic as well as air, noise, and light pollution. I urge you not to approve the site development of this project. What they say will be used today may change tomorrow and they may open the floodgates to their entire community. Thank you. Show of hands for comments? Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Steven Spadafino. I've been a resident of the peaceful community of Holly Ridge for 10 years. I live on High Ridge Court, which has not been so quiet over the last few years. There's been excessive noise due to the makeshift ball field and Rivercrest residents have been using. Clanking of bats and cheering. Ironically, this noise completely stopped once these town planning board meetings began. The Jehovah's claim to want to be good neighbors, but their actions have been deceptive. The proposed ball field, soccer field, stands, and 250 some odd parking spaces which have no business being in a residential area, will create an unbearable amount of noise for the surrounding community, especially where I live in the cul-de-sac that butts right up against their property. One former owner in our community promptly and coincidentally sold his unit, which is across the street from my town home on January 31st. That person is a recently elected Fishkill Town board member. His actions speak volumes about how bad and irresponsible these proposals are for the surrounding community. I can't tell you how many of our neighbors are already considering moving. This is so bad. If by chance this project is inevitable, which I can't imagine why it would be, we request an extensive long-term noise study regarding a sound barrier wall like we have on parkways that would be installed on the riverfront property and maintained by the Watchtower organization. If the major noise problem cannot be resolved, it would be unlawful for the planning board to approve a project that has no means of mitigating this issue. A disturbance such as this is an illegal taking of my rights to enjoy my property. Trees will not do the job here. Judging by the excessive noise that was happening with a few players on a small makeshift baseball field before they were on their short-term best behavior, add a soccer field, baseball field, stands, and 250 parking spaces for guests, and it will be a massive disturbance for the surrounding community. Many of us have been here since the inception of this community. Once this project is completed, the negative impact it will have will be irreversible. We deserve the right to live peacefully and quietly. Thank you. Show of hands. Who else wishes to speak? Y yes, behind, yes. Hello, I'm Marissa Bennett. I'm the board president at the HOA for Holly Ridge. So we haven't received any requests to speak or meet at all. So I'm willing to do that. Um, I've already submitted my comments a couple of times and I'm not gonna repeat um, you know, what my thoughts are on this, but I will say if you're looking to do what you're saying, I think that those items need to be included in, a, in the contract that gets signed and there needs to be a way to hold them accountable. So if you're not gonna open it up to the full Jehovah Witness community, we have to have a way to hold them accountable to that. Cause like the you know, other person mentioned, that could change tomorrow, you know? And we're, we're very committed to the environment that we live in and we want the safety of our children that are riding bikes on a street that's already impacted by all the cars. And you know, we're just very concerned about the safety. So again, I'm not gonna continue to go through the comments that have already been 
um, shared, but you know, we're willing to meet. I mean, I've shared the comments. I, I don't think that they're being very neighborly. There's quite a few um, developments around the area that I, we haven't seen any, any reach out. And you know, I think some of our other um, community members are gonna come up here and share some feedback, but I just wanted to say that. Yes. <coughs> My name is Raisa Pruce. I live in uh, Holy Ridge uh, only a couple of years. I love this community. It's beautiful. And I absolutely agree with people who were speaking before me. Please pay attention. This is very, very important to us. Thank you. Show of hands, anybody else? Yes, behind the uh, laptop, I can't, <laughs> I don't see a hand though. Uh, good evening, members of the board, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jim Coburn. I live on Granite Court. I've been a resident for three years here. Um, I've lived peacefully with the Jehovah's Witnesses from the day one. So I know that there's probably not a lot that can be done because this project falls within the scope of what they're looking to do. I guess my big issue is to back up what Mr. Spadafino said, we're going to need a sound barrier for whatever they're going to do. Trees don't work. I'll tell you why I know for a fact. Go on up to Malta, New York at Saratoga County Speedway, sit at this guy's little McMansion that he's got that's next to it. Of course, he's the one who built it. And there's tons of trees. You cannot see that speedway, but you can sure hear it every summer. Now what does work is what's on the throughway. We're gonna need those kind of type of barriers for this project. Cause it could easily expand. Everybody's meaning well at this moment. I believe everybody's being truthful at this moment, but people change, circumstances change, and things change. So my big thing with this whole project, okay, besides traffic, which 9D everybody knows is awful, is noise. And when is that noise going to happen? When's it gonna start? And when is it gonna end? You know, live next, to a, live next to a bar and you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, you're, you're counting the clock when it's closing time. So I don't know the rules that you have in this town for quiet hours, but I just like to leave you with that little bit of what I know about noise I want to thank you for your time. Yes, in front of the gentleman who just spoke. Kelly Antonucci, a 17-year resident of Holly Ridge. At the last meeting, the Watchtower rep said that they would like to plant trees as a sound barrier and they would need to do that on town property and Holly Ridge HOA property because otherwise the trees would be planted on or by the cap. The cap is which covers the toxic waste site and is designed to keep all of us safe. Um, but if they planted the, uh, were not, not able to plant the trees on our property, or, and or the town's property, they'd have to plant them by the cap and the roots would deteriorate the cap. And that is a statement from the Jehovah Witness attorney that was on video. So obviously that's extremely concerning to all of us here at Holly Ridge and the surrounding communities. Um, Mr. Brozier had told the rep that he would need to contact the HOA directly as well as the town board. And as of today, we have not been contacted by the Jehovah Witness and neither has the town from my understanding. So obviously this is a huge um, concern of ours. We are concerned for our safety at this point if they're planting trees that are going to deteriorate the cap. Uh, they don't seem to take your suggestion very seriously, although I think this is an extremely serious situation. 
The uh, Jehovah Witness rep also dismissed the planning board's suggestion of a sound barrier wall, stating that he did not think that we would like to see a wall. He is not authorized to speak for us, and he never asked us. We actually would like a wall, um, as some of my neighbors have mentioned. We'd also like an acoustic consultant to do an acoustic study on the impact of the noise from these fields. So instead of reaching out to us, they sent us this um, misrepresent misrepresentation newsletter, but apparently that is acceptable to send out lies. Um, and they, uh, let's see here. So I don't think that they took your wise suggestions to contact the HOA or the town. Obviously, we're concerned about toxic chemicals killing us or making us sick, and where these trees are going to be planted. As this is a safety risk, I would like to ask for a full environmental study of this plan, uh, where they are planting the trees and what the options are for protecting the cap. And I would again ask that this meeting be held open and that the board require uh, the HOA to complete these items. I also want to respond to some of their items in their response dated May 26th. It refers to industrial zoning, that this property is zoned for that. They show an aerial photo of the area in April 1994 on packet page 34, with our current roads superimposed um, on this forest land. And I have to assume that they're superimposed because Holly Ridge, Streamside, Overlook Point, and most of Castle Point did not even exist in 1994. Um, and they say that it has always been zoned industrial, but really the greatest point that this development does not belong there is the photos that they included in the packet. So I would urge you to uh, look at those photos from 1994 and compare it to the photo of July 2021 on page 45. Communities have developed around this industrial site. It's not appropriate to place this development here now. This is a family neighborhood. I would also like to address some issues with the traffic study, and I would like to understand, is it acceptable to begin a traffic study that has not been approved by the planning board? Because last month's meeting, we found that they had already started the traffic study. On packet page 1445 shows a summary of accidents at the Brockway 9D and Pappas Lane intersection. It states that the time period for this was February 1st, 2016 to February 28th, uh, 2018. At the bottom of the page, it summarizes the accidents by years with columns for 2016, 17, 18, and 19. You have I, one minute. Okay, I found this peculiar because um, the study ends in 18. So why would there be a column for 2019 displaying zero accidents? That should at the very least have stated NA for not, not applicable because it, otherwise it's misrepresenting the number of accidents and implying that there were no accidents in 2019 when we don't really know that. Um, you know, I really want to verify this information, but I could not because nowhere on any of the pages does it cite a source. Where did they get this information from? Even in an elementary school, my children have to cite their sources when they're turning in reports. So I would expect that a commissioned professional report would also cite their sources. And then I would also ask at the dates of the traffic study. So they say May 2nd to May 9th. I asked because on May 3rd is when they installed cameras at the entrance to Holly Ridge, Streamside, and Vista Point. On May 4th at 10 p.m. on my way home from the hospital, the cameras were removed. I watched them remove them. So I am very curious, I don't see that data listed anywhere about what was observed on cameras. It looks like they're only referring to the single strip across the road well west of Holly Ridge, which means they did not count any of the massive amounts of traffic going into Vista Point, Streamside, Holly Ridge, or even the shopping plaza. At time, but I would absolutely encourage you, you seem to have a nice letter there with a lot of detail. I would kindly ask that you submit that to the planning board. Okay, how can we see what everybody else has submitted? Because it really does a disservice to all of us when we don't know what they have submitted. And I was not able to find that online in the packet. Is there a place I can go to find that? My understanding is part of the public. What, what are we talking about? What, what, is, what do you mean by everybody else submitted? So the two developers that submitted letters, their letters were read aloud so that we could all hear those and they were read aloud into Actually, the record. Because they were received today. Right. The but items are received Sure. 
So, so my question is the letters that were received for last month's meeting that were not read aloud and this month's meeting, where can I as a resident go to find them? find them in the minutes once they are posted to the website. They're attached to the minutes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, I see a hand all the way at the back of the room. Hello, so my name is Nisville. I live at 4107 Ridgecrest Drive. Um, I heard she say that you guys were monitoring accidents and traffic by Brockway at 9D, so I'm not sure if you guys caught my accident where I got rear-ended by a school bus right there at Brockway. Um, this afternoon, just by the plaza, I'm looking at all the traffic coming down Brockway, and I'm just like, I can't believe you guys are going to okay all this foot traffic, all this people coming in here on that tiny, windy road. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> like... What's the study? Where do you guys publish this? Because I didn't know anything about this. We just moved there last year. We didn't know anything about any of these plans, any of this. So we thought we got a piece of paradise up here, got locked out, and all these plans are here to take it away from us already. <laughs> well, that's all I can say. Thanks. Just to clarify, the traffic study was part of the, the files that are available for, for download. Yes, sir. Yes. Hello, my name is Heather Spadafino. I live in Holly Ridge. Um, love where I live. Anyway. Um, I just wanted to also mention that I actually have on video box trucks. I don't know if you got, no one's really mentioning all the, tra you know, what tractor trailers are going to be coming down there. There's warehouses that are being proposed. Um, they say that they're not going to have buses. Um, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I, I, and what's going to happen when they do bus people down there? There's going to be people from all around the world because I believe that this is going to be a new hub. I mean, honestly, he's saying these things, so it's, on record that he's saying that there's not going to be buses. When the buses come, when I can video buses coming, what there's not going to be a leg to stand on. Our road is narrow. I suggest that maybe, um, I, I'm surprised that a traffic study was done. For what? They haven't, this hasn't been done yet. So what's the traffic study? I mean, honestly, there's so many accidents that have already happened um, in this area. That should be enough to say we're not going to allow more of this to happen. Um, I am going to speak for people that are not, that don't feel comfortable speaking right now, that there is, we already have foot traffic of Jehovah Witnesses on our private property. I don't know what they're doing, but they're walking in groups. They're also over in the um, adjacent development parking at their, um, their clubhouse, um, not knowing that it's not Jehovah Witness property. Um, and they're parking in their, on their streets. So when there is going to be a lot of people coming for family day and everything like that, that is going to infringe on our, our private property. And who is going to stop that? How are we going to stop that? Um, I'm also concerned about the value of my home. That if the ta you know, we're not going to be able to sell when there's going to be so much noise coming from right next door. And the noise is going to be tr tremendous. Um, this morning I'm listening to birds at six o'clock in the morning, knowing full well that that's when they play at six o'clock in the morning. And that's only like eight people at six o'clock in the morning. It's not, it, something's gotta be done as far as time, um, when they can play, you know, and who's going to stop this from happening? You have to understand that this is, um, this is something that uh, we need a wall, <laughs> build a wall. Um, and uh, we also, I think, are um, allowed to go walk down to the, the river. That's something that was promised to us. 
AVR did us such a disservice. We were supposed to have um, access to the Hudson. They lied. Hudson uh, AVR lied about now all of a sudden we have an elderly home that's only for Jehovah Witnesses on our property, you know, like down there, that was never supposed to be, it was supposed to be more townhouses. I just feel like you guys are letting everything snowball and it's really devastating to us. You're gonna lose taxpayers. You're gonna lose taxpayers. I don't know what you want. Anyway, thank you so much. Yes, I see a hand uh, behind the podium there. Yes. Roberta West, I live on Pondview Loop in Holly Ridge. Um, there's been a lot of promises made through the after meeting from last month, and they seem to um, be listening to us and said things like they're not gonna put lights over the fields, that's wonderful. They're gonna turn the fields, keep them a little bit farther away from our border, that's wonderful too. They're not gonna let people from the outside, the community come in there, and that's all wonderful. I just want to um, make sure that these things are good, put in writing. So if we ever have to have any future litigation, we can easily retrieve this as evidence. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other? So good evening, um, I'm Kenya Gazden. I live at High Ridge Court. Um, I just wanna reiterate that it is difficult for us not to repeat what we don't hear. And if other people's information, to the chairman, if other people's information can be read into record, all of those people that live where we live at, that took the time out to send their letters in, their letters should not be summarized um, by someone who feels that they are given the most pertinent information. It should be read in its totality. When I sat on a town board and it was a big um, situation before us, those letters that were sent in were read in its totality to give the residents an idea of what people are speaking about. We are all here this evening because we care about where we live at and we care to be good neighbors. Uh, currently, unfortunately, the Jehovah Witnesses, that project is not being forthcoming. They currently have decreased the noise so much so from playing these games that we don't know that they exist. So we know that as soon as they get your approval to move forward, they will begin to make this noise. And we're not saying that it's you know noise that is consistent, but it is consistent from six o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock in the morning. So we are asking you to implement the time frame of 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. We cannot continue to allow builders to come in here and tell us, the taxpayers, what they want and then we do it for them. It is time that we stand up and we do what is right for the people of Fishkill. And we are the the people of Fishkill. We would like them to do an assessment of the road expansion because when we say that the accidents that are happening there, they're happening there. So if you was to travel there with your family, you too risk getting into an accident because the road is very narrow and you risk an, ask, an accident. We are asking you that uh, to decrease this parking. We know that they dropped it to 150 parking spaces, but we're asking you to decrease it to half of the original 246. And why? Because they don't need it. If they walk from one project to the, to the next project, they can walk there. They don't need this space. This is typical of the projects that go up. They expand for years out. Do not fall for the okie doke people. They are building not for today, they are building for five years from now. So although you have an applicant before you, you have many that sit in this crowd here. They are not to tell us that we don't want a barrier wall. We want to be barriered in. So we're asking you not to continue to continue this, this uh, um, the open, the public meeting, so that this way they can do what we're asking. They decided without your permission to conduct a traffic study. 
And all of a sudden, they have evidence. They don't control you. You control the system and the rules and regulations. We do not. We want them to put in writing. We don't want tours in this community. We have learned from others that they will be busing people in. This is a, this is a transitional situation. And so therefore, we don't want that. Yes, we will greet people. We will say hello. We will be kind. But we want to be respected in the space, in a space in which we took our hard-earned tax dollars and purchased the homes of our choice. So we are not here opposing a religious group. We are here opposing a project that is not going to be good for us. We can't swallow it right now. And we're hoping that all of you that sit here in front of us today can't swallow it either. This is tough stuff. We want to make sure that it is in writing, that we have access to the river. As someone mentioned before, it was said you know, verbally that we will continue to have access. But we know, I've been on the town board, we know that all of these sideball deals that are not put in writing don't get put in practice. And we are asking you guys to start putting things in practice so we can hold people's feet to the fire. I am saddened by what my people and my neighbors have to deal with in Overlook Point. They are not mad at someone who wants to visit their loved one who has aged and now is in hospital. What they are upset about is the, the huge amount of traffic that comes in and the community that is so respectful uses their tennis courts and all of that other stuff to play with without permission. We cannot go into that community and play with anything, nothing. Yet and still, they are disrespecting the owners that live in Overlook Point. They also are claiming to be people of their word. But guess what? When it came to paying the bond to ensure that the roads were taken care of, Overlook Point management had to put a knee in their neck to get them to do it. So we don't want that kind of relationship. We're also asking you to see if we can consider a bond that will go into place so that they can help take care of the roads. Those track the trailers that they've placed somewhere else, they're coming. They are coming. So I implore you, I pull at your heart and I pull at the hearts of all those that have children and people who live in this community. We stand together that these things should be taken care of and it should be taken care of now. The residents deal with Fishkill, not the builders. Thank you. Please. Any other people who wish to speak at this time? Good evening. Um, I just want to say as a point of reference, just living in the neighborhood, um, Listening to the beginning of the meeting, especially the gentleman to the right, it sounds like you don't want to hear from the public. And I don't know if you really care about that, but that's what you're conveying to the taxpayers and people that live in the community. So I would say if you, if you want to try to care about the community, I would say try not to shut them out and welcome us to speak up because we, we take our time to come in here and speak to, I understand you have your laws and your rules. But anyway, getting to the point, the Jehovah's Witnesses um, is a vast organization with people. There's 90,000 congregations throughout the United States alone and across the world, right? Thousands of congregations. They have bus tours at all complexes. And also, families drive in from California, from Virginia. They drive their personal cars, and they tour the facilities. If you don't believe me, you can go and take a look at their website, OK? So we need to understand, are they going to have bus tours? And if so, we should get that documented. And if families are going to come in from all over, we just want to know. All right, so that's, that's important. The other thing is they have morning worship that starts at 7 o'clock. So the average Bethelite, that's the person that lives there, they get up in the morning and they go play sports. So that's why we wake up in the morning and we hear Great cheers and cheers and cheers. Also, I have documented at 10 o'clock at night them playing some sort of loud drama 
that you could hear all over the neighborhood. I even recorded two Sundays ago, you could hear something like a big forklift or a crane just banging at 8.30 at night. So I have the videos. I know one of the gentlemen said, well, you know, whatever about the videos. So, but I think you guys should um, entertain videos or whatever else when we do have these hearings. So I'm saying this to say that we need a wall. And whatever it takes to get a wall or to get a study on the wall, I think is very important. Because the way some of you guys come off is though you don't live in houses in the neighborhoods. And you don't have kids sleeping at 6 o'clock in the morning with noise. So if you want to be considerate about our feelings, then everybody else has spoke about a wall. I think you should give us the opportunity to get a study on a wall or whatever it takes to get a wall. I think we should get it. Thank you. Any others who wish to speak? I'm not saying it. You, no. Okay. So I think at this point is where we're going to have our board discussion as, uh, and I'd like to introduce our consultants for their advice as well as to uh, whether the public hearing should be held open to the July 14th meeting. There were some comments brought up tonight uh, regarding sound barriers that it seems that several, if not many, are requesting and um, the need to investigate that further um, in addition to the traffic study that was received, but we have not received any comment from our consultants at this point. So based on those things, as well as some of the other items that were brought up tonight, I'd like to know if, our, Dominic, what your thoughts are on the appropriateness of keeping the hearing open or yeah, considering that, it for closure. I mean, essentially, you know, it would be the preference of the board. There's three options that you have. I mean, one would be to close the public hearing. Second would be to close the public hearing but allow additional time for a more written comment for a period of time. And then the third option would be to keep the public hearing open to the July 14th meeting. But based on the topics brought up tonight, You know, traffic study, receiving comments, sound barrier, are those? I, I mean, I mean, from my perspective, I think that the public comment, you know, is very useful uh, and instructive to the board because it uh, identifies issues for the board to consider as it's reviewing the, the project. Um, from my perspective, it's not uh, necessary for the public to continue to be able to comment on specific aspects of the plan. The public is really their best. Uh, their their best role in this process is to identify what concerns that they have for the board, and so I think that there's been a fair opportunity for that to have occurred to this point. You know, this board ultimately is also going to have to decide uh, whether or not this project is going to require an environmental impact statement or not. And if there is going to be an environmental impact statement, then there's going to be uh, several significant uh, opportunities for the public to continue to comment throughout that process. John, are there any other items for us to consider at this point in terms of the public hearing it's being held open? Uh, no. I, all I would say or, or to add to Council's comments is Regarding the traffic, because of some scheduling conflicts, we were not able to, to get that reviewed in time for tonight's meeting. But our in-house expert has begun the review and believes that she will complete it by the end of next week. So we should have that wrapped up with comments for you to uh, consider be well in advance of the next meeting. So really, you know, it's truly up to the board whether you would like to allow the public to once again um, comment on items such as traffic and, and noise. All right, I think this is an appropriate time to go down the line to the board and get their thoughts on which they would prefer to see at this point. Uh, VJ, I'll start with you. I heard um, some comments about the um, 
noise pollution. I think we may have the microphone. Um, I heard some comments about the noise pollution out there and the barriers that the um, applicant has suggested. Should we relook re -look into those? Or I feel like that may have to be relooked into it. You know, the applicant's suggestions were commented on, right? Those could be items that we could discuss during the project review and request that the applicant provide. Mm -hmm. But in terms of um, whether we have enough to close the public hearing, if we've received enough input, we have the traffic study in hand, we've received uh, public comment. So uh, in terms of items that we could request, that could be discussed during the project review. And Dominic, if I'm speaking out of turn. No, that, that's correct. So keeping the public uh, comments section open for next meeting or? Or, or I, we could leave it, a written. It's really, it's really the board's preference as to I would, whether. I would prefer to keep it open. If you Bob? Um, I was speaking with Felix about our concerns about the fact that this development's got this fields and this sporting stuff on it and the concerns that it seems like a lot of people are concerned about the hours, the use. Um, I don't even know what the light, I didn't get a chance to really look about lighting, you know, whether it would be something that they would use, you know, and long hours. I guess there is a lot of noise. Um, I've always been concerned in this, the whole town itself, the development of, of the infrastructure of the traffic study because of the road being so narrow and everything else. It just seems like we just forge ahead um, without really understanding the safety of the citizens to a certain extent. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm about keeping it open. Ravi? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm kind of leaning to, uh, I mean, uh, we had a public hearing uh, for the last, sorry. Uh, I mean, we had the public hearing for the last three months. So I'm assuming we have given enough time for the public to come and speak in front of the board. I'm leaning towards uh, allowing the public to comment online for the next two weeks, maybe three weeks, uh, but not keep it open until the next month. Felix? Um, my feeling is this. I, it seems like every month they come up with something different, and which is helpful to us. Right? Um, so I, I really think we should just keep it open at this point. Uh, I don't think it's going to slow down the project in any way. Um, you know, I, I heard some stuff today that you know I think is very, very important for us as planning board members. And you know, um, so I, I really want to keep it open. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen next month. They may give us something else that we don't know about the area. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't live there, so I don't know what they go through. But I don't think it's going to slow down the, the project in any way. I, I, I want to keep it open for another month and see what the traffic study comes, see if they have any comments on that. And then I think maybe at that point, depending on what happens next month, we could probably close it then. But that's my feeling on it. Fred? I'll make it simple since I'm near the end. I agree. <laughs> Jody? Um, I, I would say keep it open. I totally understand what they're going through. I get it and some really good points were brought up. Toxins, I did not realize that there was some sort of something there. That should be looked at because we're not just talking about a situation where a few people may get sick. It could affect children. It could be generations. We don't know. Who knows? It, for all I know, it could be a super fun site. I really don't know. Um, the road, that is a big consideration. That should be looked at. We already had an issue on that road with the septic. Maybe a bond should be put in place. I don't know. I'm new to this. I'm trying to understand. I came onto the board to help the community and I really want to do that. Um, I understand it from both sides, but I think it should be kept open till we can get the answers that we need to 
put our heads down at night and know we did the absolute best rather than to just push something through that, that may have long-term, very long-term consequences. That's my opinion. Thank you. So I'm hearing a consensus of to keep the uh, public hearing open to the uh, July 14th meeting. Yes, if that's the case, then uh, a motion to uh, continue the public hearing at the July 14th meeting would be appropriate. Chair, I'll make that motion. Second. Uh, any discussion? Second. <laughs> before, before we do vote, I, I, I do want to let the board know we, during the project review, the applicant at the last meeting and also at this meeting has prepared a letter going through some of the major topics that have been discussed to date with, uh, and, and in some cases, and in most cases, offering suggestions for mitigation, I would uh, strongly ask the board to um, provide input on each of those items as to mitigation that they would like to see and um, how that could be incorporated into the plan, including some of the items that were brought up tonight because um, at the last discussion, I don't think there was enough, um, honestly, enough input provided by the board and um, we need to, you know, as some of us mentioned, that we need to get to a point where we can have the information. Well, we do have information. The board needs to provide input toward that regard as to what needs to be provided so that we can get to a point of det making a determination of significance. So yeah. I would. Yeah, I mean, on that point, if I may just expand on that, I think it would be helpful uh, for the applicant to uh, walk through their latest submission that was made on May 25th, including how they are proposing to respond to public comment uh, that was made to date. Um, and also that portion of the meeting, which will occur later, is open to the public. And so I would encourage the public to listen.